Guys, it has finally happened. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has finally announced the date of the upcoming general election. So that's good, isn't it? Is everybody happy now? You know that we finally got a date in the diary. I know a lot of us wanted him gone, didn't we? A long time before this. I know a lot of us wanted him out the door and a Labour government in number 10. And, and I understand it. I do. I get the frustration because God knows it takes some time and prep to coordinate street parties. <laughs> I mean, we've got to dig up the ream. We've got to order the bunting, right? And I think the, uh, I think the supplies are still exhausted from the reform rallies, St. George's Day and the platy jubes. So better get the orders in quick. We've got to get the photographers in for the night as the results are read out because we want to make sure that this thing is documented in as beautiful a way as is possible, don't we? These things only come around so often. I mean, here I am, right? Here I am joking about, you know, taking time to coordinate a party for it and you get these sort of connotations of weddings and planners, don't you? I mean, I am, I am tempted to contract in a wedding photographer <laughs> for this, for that night. I really am. <laughs> because I want, I want the most beautiful, graceful images <laughs> of that night hung on my wall. I really do. You know, people would be like, you, you know, most people would have a picture of them and their wife in, in a frame like that. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, no, I, I understand that. But this, this was honestly the happiest day of my life. <laughs> you really, you really hate the Tories more than you love your wife, Aid? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I do. <laughs> I think, I think the radicalization has, has really set in now. And do you know how I know that? Do you know how I know that? Because I, I love my missus. I do. The love is real. The love is there. But if she said she was going to vote conservative, in this election. I I don't know if the love would outrun the hate. <laughs> isn't isn't love a more powerful emotion than hate though? I I don't think so. No. <laughs> but yeah. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. I want this thing documented. I want slow-mo videography catching the tears of my local Tory as they plummet from his cheeks and splash on the floor and all to the soundtrack of romantic rhythms and modes, you know? <laughs> That's what I want. But, um, I mean, how, how bad do we think it's going to be for them, guys? How bad could it get for the Tories? Because we know it's going to be bad, right? The polls have been, the polls have been abysmal for the Tories for so long. Now, like, it's literally been years. <laughs> They've been at 20 to 25 points behind for years now. And, um, like, some, sometimes I think the reason you can't talk sense into Americans about guns and gun control, right, is because they've had their guns for years now, right? So they've gotten so used to them. And it's become their culture, right? And the reason you can't talk sense into Brits or Irish people about their health concerns and dangers of alcohol, right, is because it's been years since we've had alcohol. You know, if alcohol came out now, it's so deadly and so bad for you. People would be like, we need to ban that thing. But because we've had it for so long, we've gotten used to it. It's become our culture. And then we bring it back to politics. <laughs> it's like the Tories have been behind in the polls quite badly for over two years now. The hatred has just set in. It's become kind of cultural. And so the question is not, and uh, save for a very weird set of events unfolding, could never be who is going to end up in power. Um, can't, can't be that so much as... How bad can it be for the Tories when vitriolic hatred for the Conservative Party 
has, just like guns and alcoholism in the US and the UK respectively, it's become part of our culture. It's just who we are now. It's bedded in. Nothing can move that dial for the Tories. Although, you know what, we should probably acknowledge also that, um, you know, when you're trying to persuade somebody to give up booze in the UK or Ireland or begging someone not to buy a gun in the US, you do at least have the benefit of having common sense and reality on your side, don't you? The Conservatives have no such advantage. <laughs> they can't they can't talk sense into you like, oh, you better give up drinking because it's not good for you. Yeah, please don't buy a gun because potentially it could be very hazardous to the people inside your house. You can't talk sense into somebody to get them to vote for the Conservative Party. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You can logically explain to somebody why they should not vote Tory. But how, how in this day and age would it be possible to common sense talk someone into voting for the Conservatives? That's why they all default and sort of trip switch to the culture war stuff. Well, because if you vote Labour, if you vote Green or, or Lib Dems, then the, the, the trans Megan loving Marxists will let the uh, asylum refugees eat the Jews. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, it's good that it's out. It's good that we finally got this date out. You know, why is that? Why are you so excited about it, Aid? Because now I can put in my order. <laughs> now I can just pick up the foot. Yeah, I'm going to need um uh, three bags for that weekend. Three bags, bruv. You're going to be awake for days. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I don't, um, I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> you know, it's going to give me some time now to, uh, Organise the hiring of an open top bus equipped with a beer keg to just roll around London off my nut, celebrating the collapse of successive conservative governments. Um, and conversely, you know what? It's going to give me time to organise the hiring of a tanker to collect a few tons of Portsmouth Harbour sewage and have it unload in Boris Johnson's new mansion's moat. Oh, yes, there can be no. Oh, well, well, you voted them out. Now let's move on. Absolutely not. There will be repercussions. I want to have a, a mural of a shitting Mickey Mouse painted all over Robert Jenrick's front door. So it isn't too welcoming. I'm going to get so wasted that night as the results come in. I'm going to go skinny dipping with Suella Braverman, guys. Skinny dipping with Suella in the Thames is how I'm going to see the change in governments, the handover of power. It's going to be voluntary for me, somewhat forced for Suella. Because I'm just going to be like, hey, hey fo oi, Sue, Sue, follow me, Sue, this way. This, yeah, don't, don't look back that way, love. No, no, remember, the Islamists have taken over London. You right? Yeah, come, come this way. Follow me. <laughs> follow me into the Thames. Come on, quick, into the Thames, Sue. <laughs> not because not because I particularly enjoy or, or I'm excited at the prospect of skinny dipping with Suella Braverman. You know, absolutely not. Uh, so much as I like the idea of forcing a bilge hydrant Brexiter to swim in the Thames amidst the raw, untreated sewage that they allow to be dumped in it. Like, come in the river, Sue. Oh, it's so, oh, it's nice in here. It's so nice, Sue. Don't, don't look back at the Islamists. Don't, like, come in. The water's lovely. <laughs> she's she's going to be like, oh, this is, this is disgusting. This is, I, I can see actual, like, this is, why, why would you make me do this? And I'm going to be like, because I'm, because I'm celebrating, Sue. I'm celebrating. <laughs> she's going to be like. Oh my, you, you lefties are disgusting. This is, this is gross. Why? You, you should be ashamed of yourself. And then I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, I, I probably should be. But do you remember, white people have nothing to feel guilty about. So I just, as I hold up my pint of wine. <laughs> Peace.